that we pray without ceasing. Father God, that today as we share the word, that you speak to our hearts. Go pray, that we go and we pray. We pray and we go, and that's your will, and that will make you happy. Thank you, Lord. Help us that everything we do will make you happy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, number one, I want to share, uh, I think most of you know there's a sports camera called Go, Go, Go Pro. Yeah. Uh, if you know Go Pro, raise your hand. Okay, thank you. At least half of you. I didn't know Go Pro until uh, several years ago when my son entered the university and my brother-in-law on the stage, he gave him a gift. GoPro. I said, what's that? He said, you will know. So I thought they are good. Okay, that's a sports camera that if you do surfing or any kind of sport, you can uh, put tight on your head and you can even go on the water without getting wet or something. So the motto is GoPro, be a hero. And today, uh, I have a new word, go pray. It's actually go pray, go together. Because <laughs> go pray. Because when you go and you, uh, as the, the Lord of Bishop command, you go to places to make disciples. We love God, love people, make disciples. And before you go, your prayer must go first. And after you pray, you go. After you go, you keep praying and evangelizing. So prayer is like the Air Force, just like the next slide. Next. The first golf war to the war to free Kuwait. And I think most of you know the secret about for their success is their Air Force. They they went, their Air Force went first. So that's the, the major reason for them to, to free Kuwait. And I think the major reason for us to win the war, to win souls for Christ, is we pray first. We pray first, then we go to the place that Jesus asked us to go, and as we go, we keep praying. So today I'm going to share Many, many amazing stories from this book, is the Acts of the Chinese Churches. It, it talked about so many uh, Western missionaries to China and what they did for the Chinese people. And because there are too many people, so uh, we are, I, only, I only selected a few of, of them and uh, in six categories. Number one is pioneering and pastoring. So the first person is Jonathan Goforth. <laughs> go forth. Yeah, the very last name, go forth. And um, when he first went to China, especially the first maybe half a year, he was very, very frustrated. Because growing up as a kid, his weakest subject, guess what, was language. And Chinese language is not an easy language, right? Uh, who think Chinese language is not an easy language? Please raise your hands. Okay, thank you. So, so for him, he even questioned God, Lord, is that your will for me to come to China? I cannot even speak the, the right, the correct Chinese. How can I evangelize to the Chinese people? And even this one time, he and his partner, when they went to the street to evangelize, and his partner was later to China than he several months. So supposedly he should speak better Chinese, but halfway of his sharing, some Chinese stopped him. We don't understand your Chinese, let me preach. So he was very frustrated. But one day when he came home after sharing the, the gospel, he was so excited and he told his wife, Oh, I tell you, breakthrough, breakthrough today, I can share everything in Chinese. I don't know what happened, but today I can share everything so powerfully and so fully in Chinese. And starting from that, that was his breakthrough. And a couple of months later, later he received a letter from Canada, a group of students. I don't know whether they are in seminary or university. But they say um, one day at lunchtime, one of them felt a strong burden to pray for Jonathan. He didn't know what, but he knows Jonathan was in some kind of very difficult situation or challenge or very frustrated. So he gathered several other students. Come, 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 let's pray for Jonathan, go for it. There must be something for him. I feel so heavy in my heart. So a group of them, they gathered to pray for him. And as they pray and pray fervently, after, I don't know, maybe an hour or 30 minutes, they, they felt that the burden to pray is lifted. So they praise God and they believe God has done a wonderful thing for them. So they go back to their schoolwork. And two months later, when this letter, you know, this, his year was from 1859 to 1936. Well, so back then, there's no email or anything. It took maybe two months for the letter to go to China. So he read his letter and he checked his diary. Boom. The day he got breakthrough is exactly the day as they prayed for him. So God is so amazing. God is so faithful, although he, he could 
not send an email or a line or a Facebook to his prayer partner saying, I have some encounter, encounter some problem. But God is amazing. He can uh, surpass many difficulties. So, so his motto is uh, Zechariah 4, 6. Let's read together. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So he's a missionary who goes and prays uh, all the time. And also he sparked the Northeast Revival in China. Because there are too many stories. So if you are interested in any of them, you can just Google. Yeah, so there are many signs and wonders in this Northeast Revival in China. And when he was going to Henan province in China to, to preach, Hudson Taylor, the founder of China Inland Mission, wrote to him and said, if you want to go to Henan to preach the gospel, you need to go forward on your knees. On your knees. So he remembered that. So he's a man of prayer. And he, God also used him to accomplish so much. Next one is Dixon Host. Dixon Host is one of the Cambridge Seven. And when he was um, a missionary in China, his colleague realized something that he could do ministry or do things or do something and at the same time pray aloud at the same time. So he's a man of prayer and he intercedes for so many people every day and he remembers all the what, names of the more than 1,200 missionary names of China Inland Mission, including their uh, workplace, their difficulty, and their every son and daughter's name. And his motto is, the more you pray, the less mistakes you make. It's so true. So Lord help us to remember that the more we pray, the less mistakes we make. Amen. And the next one is Mildred Cable. And this uh, lady, actually three of them, they went together because they were called by God to a very remote place in China, the Gobi Desert. So to travel along is very dangerous. So usually the three ladies, they travel along. So, so later, uh, Cecil Northchuck uh, wrote a, a story for them. So Star Over Gobi is the story of Mildred Cable and actually two partners. And next, from the real picture, we can see that this is Mildred. And usually they, they travel with camels. And they always went to markets when the Chinese people in that area uh, they don't have carry for or, or, or RT mark, but every month, maybe uh, on the 10th, 20th, and 30th, they have a market, Ganji. So they always went to the marketplace to, that's where the people are. So, for example, they were asked, Oh, why are you here for? Are you buying something? And maybe somebody said, Well, actually, I'm not buying something. I'm looking for God or somebody who can save me, some super power can save me. And they will use the Bible to begin to share. Actually, you know, God is not far from each one of us, and they will begin to share the gospel and let many to the Lord. So, next one is Isabel Kong. Uh, he, she and her husband, they went to the uh, southwestern part of China, and they uh, evangelized to the Yi people. And, you know, her Chinese name is Yang Mi Wei, and her last name is Kong. And Kong and Yang are very different in pronunciation. So before I read this book, I was curious, how come her last name is translated as Yang? Until I read this book, they I realized because in the Yi tribe, most of the people, their last name is Yang. So to identify with the people they want to evangelize, they change their Chinese last name to Yang instead of the uh, Ke or some other Chinese name similar to their pronunciation to identify with the Chinese people. She's also a lady of prayer. Uh, where, where if she has any difficulty, that she always pray to uh, overcome the difficulties. She said, we need to look resolutely away from the impossibilities and to the Lord. His help will come. Amen. His help will come. And now in the E tribe in China, I think at least 60 to 80% are Christians, including one lady in our every nation, Shenzhen, um, pastor's wife. Uh, Casey led a pastor to the Lord, and his wife is a, is a, a lady from Yi province where she evangelized. So praise the Lord. And next one, Benjamin Broomhall. Uh, you can count, he has 10 children. And guess how many children went to China as missionaries from UK? Five. 
five of his ten children went to China as missionaries. And uh, not only that, but he and the next uh, missionary. Oh, his motto is righteousness, exalt the nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Together with the next missionary, the Methodist missionary James Maxwell, both of them, together with other uh, people, they are strongly against opium. Because when they were uh, evangelizing in China, they found out something that broke their heart. They realized, on uh, in, in the one hand, they are preaching the gospel to the Chinese people, but on the other hand, their countrymen, the businessmen, they were selling opium to the Chinese people. So it really broke their hearts, and you know, it made their uh, work very hard, because Chinese people would say, oh, you are here to sell opium, and missionary only part of the business. So it made their, their work very difficult. So um, more than once, maybe many, many times, they say uh, in the uh, uh, house of UK, saying, how can we let UK do something, such a major crime to other country like this? So after their protest, finally, praise the Lord, in 1916, the Chinese government banned the, 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 the use of opium. And it saved, it saved so many people, including my grandparent, my, my grandfather, because my father told me my grandfather used to be an opium addict, but later no more opium, so he can he could not do that anymore. So I praise the Lord and I thank God for James Maxwell and so also for Ruth Hall. And next one, Peter Parker. <laughs> that one is Spider Man, but a real Peter Parker. He's a Chinese, uh, uh, he's a uh, UK missionary to, to China, and he's very special. Before any surgery, in addition to a very thorough study of the case, he prayed fervently for every patient. And in his diary, you can, you can see this in every corner. For example, we turned someone to the hands of the greatest doctor, Jesus. And on the other, at the other corner, thank God for the healing of this person was everywhere. And he also emphasized the mental status of each patient before surgery. Usually spend several days to help patients to have faith in God that he did the surgery. Consequently, not only were the patients healed, but also transformed spiritually. So it's only one painting, but actually one of his uh, patients then become a, a, a Christian and disciple. That person's uncle is a very famous painter in China, and he painted many of his of patients from, from sickness to, 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 to host, um, holistic. And it's in some museums in the, in, the, in the West. So if you are interested, you can Google Peter Parker, not a Spider-Man, but this medical missionary. And he left a, a great legacy in China. And next one is Nelson Bell. Who knows Nelson Bell? Raise your hand. OK, thank you, one hand. But if I mention her dog, his daughter, his daughter is the one to the very right, the tall and slender lady. Later, when her, her, when her daughter went to the States uh, for, for college, she met a young man, and that young man is next, Billy Graham. So, so Nelson became, who knows Billy Graham, raise your hand. I think most of you know, thank you. And he became the father-in-law of Billy Graham. And this Dr. Bell, um, He's a, he's a, he has a wonderful life. Uh, in his college life, he played baseball so well. Even uh, the, 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 the uh, major league wanted to sign him as a player. But he prayed and he felt the Lord is leading him to mainland China. So he turned down the, the, the high bonus of the major league and went to China as a missionary. And um, doing mission work and also a medical doctor, he saved many people's lives also very gospel to them. And when he came back to the United States retired, he became a Billy Graham's uh, consultant. And also, he's an editor for a major magazine. So his life has been so successful in every area because his motto is this. Shall we read this together? Trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Hallelujah. So we pray that the Lord uh, will help us, that we can always trust the Lord with all our heart and do not lay our own understanding. And in all our ways, acknowledge Him, 
and the Lord will make our path straight. Amen. And the next one is Anne Scott Bernstein. She is a missionary from Norway, and I want to read a story of her. She has been in China seven years, and that seven years happened to be the, uh, in the uh, war between China and Japan. So in 1945, August 26, after the war, she wants to see her family members. She hasn't seen any of them for seven years. And she, she took a plane from Kunming to India. And near Nepal and Himalaya, she met 150 uh, missionaries also from Norway, some waiting to go back to their country, some waiting to go back to China, and most of them have waited for one or two years. And it really shocked her, oh my goodness, one or two years, because it's right after the war. So the transportation is a big problem. Everybody wants to go home, but there are not so many transportations, not so many airlines. And she, so, so she was praying and praying, and it comes the opportunity. There is one ship going to Holland, and two Chinese resigned. So the, uh, the, the, the employer agreed to hire Anne. So she went to the ship as a cleaning lady, and she worked day and night, very, very um, um, challenging. And on December 17th, almost four months after she left China, uh, they boarded in Holland, Amsterdam. And together, she collected nine letters from her mom. And every letter, the last sentence is the same. My dearest aunt, please come back for Christmas this year. You must go come back, I miss you. And normally, only seven days away is Christmas. From Holland to Norway should not be a problem. But back then, it's right after war. It's very hard to say. Actually, someone told me very friendly. Well, I, I hope you understand. Everybody wants to go back home for Christmas. Only those who work really hard for at least five years are qualified to take an airplane or a train. And you missionaries will never fight any war. You are not eligible. But she thinks in her heart, if Jesus will let me to go back by Christmas, he will have a way. He will have a way. And she saw an airline a company, and she went in to, to, to see the, the, the schedule. And the employee asked her curiously, what do you do? Who are you? And she said, oh, I'm the daughter of the Heavenly Father. And maybe the, the, that person is also Christian. And she smiled, and she said, oh, it just happened that two people from Sweden, they just canceled their reservations. So 23rd at 10 AM, you can come to check again. So she waited several days, and when she went, hallelujah, she was on the plane, and she arrived at Stockholm of Sweden, uh, closer to her home. From Stockholm, if, if you take a train ride to uh, Oslo, it will be like more than 10 hours. And that night, 8 o'clock, there's one train to Oslo. But there's one problem. She only has American dollars and pounds, but no Swedish currency. And that was a Sunday. All the banks were closed. And there's no ATM because it's many, many years ago. <laughs> there's no Swedish money. She cannot purchase the ticket. She can, how can, how, how can she do? So she prayed. And as she prayed, she remembered the name of a principal of a seminary. So she got a number. And she called. And she exchanged the money. So she got a ticket. So praise the Lord. She uh, was ready to go home. And on 24th, 11 o'clock, the train went into Oslo train station, and she was so welcomed by all the brothers and sisters, um, and they went to church for a welcome party. And she held her hands, that of the hands who prayed for them more than seven years, and she was so touched. And 3 p.m., she took another train to another place in Norway. Her father and two brothers come to pick her up. And from there, she took another one year of ferry. Finally, she arrived home, Horton. Two sisters waiting at the, the dock. But the mom, uh, afraid herself to be too, too emotional, she stayed at home. And finally, finally, after seven years and after four months on a row, she entered her home at 5 o'clock, the traditional starting hour for their family to celebrate Christmas. Sharp. Five o'clock sharp after seven months, after four months on the road. 
You know, God is so faithful. So when I read this story, I was so touched by the faithfulness of God that when God led her children to do mission work, that she will always reward them with faithfulness and, and, and mercy. And this is a hospital. It was not like this. In the beginning, it's only a very small metro station. But you know, the, the, uh, during the Chinese communist takeover in 1949, she needed to withdraw from um, China to Hong Kong. So she started a, a small, you can see that one, a, a small uh, medical station. But later, now, uh, it's a very big hospital. And there's one brother uh, from our Chinese survey. He's right right on that, uh, talking his bike. And he told us that right now, Lin Shi Hospital is a very big nursing home in Hong Kong and help many people. So that's, she left her legacy because she disciples so many people, because she loved God, loved people, and made disciples. And next, before we introduce more uh, missionaries, I want to share some uh, prayer tools that help us to really win the war. Um, this is the Nothing Hidden Ministries. That is a tool booklet. Uh, Casey and I, we went to Lamb, Love After Marriage in August. And not only our marriage experience breakthrough, but also my personal prayer life also went through a breakthrough. So I really want to thank God. And we learn how to pray for each other and bless each other on a daily basis. For example, if I want to bless Erica, I will look at Erica's eyes and I will say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless Erica's spirit to rise up and lead her soul and body to be united with the Holy Spirit to receive all the blessings and healing and guidance of the Father. So that's the way we do spirit blessing. You can do that for your family members, your loved ones, your office mates, your students. You can do that for, for anyone. And another one is a prayer tool uh, that I learned so useful. It's a one, two, three, skidoo. It sounds very funny, but it's very, very powerful. Because in the love after marriage, or it's on your bulletin. You don't have to come because it's right, right there on, on the bulletin. I hope you can keep this bulletin at, at least the, 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 uh, this, this path. Because it's very useful. During our uh, reconciliation, five steps in the love after marriage. Casey and I, we realized something that both of us, we uh, unknowingly believe a lie, and the lie almost uh, exactly the same, that hinder our marriage. Because I think our marriage before that, maybe only 90 or 85 score, uh, we think we're hindered by, by some lie. But when we realize, we use the one to three schedule. For example, what, I, what we did is that, Laura, I nail that lie specifically to the cross. And I break all agreements I made with that lie, known or unknown, and I repent of joining with that lie. I ask you, Father, to send that lie away from me. Last is the most important part. Father, what do you want to give me in place of that lie? So I, I remember that lie is something like, our marriage um, is like this. It cannot be get any better. I think that I remember that's a lie. So when I do the one who we see do, and toward the, the end, when we wait upon the Lord and ask the Father, what do you want to give us to, to, uh, in, in place of that lie? Uh, both of us, we felt that the Lord will give us grace upon grace and strength upon strength. And amazingly, starting from that day, our marriage is getting better, like never before. So I want to encourage you to use this one to three schedule to, it, it works for so many, for example, if you have a long-term um, frustration or, or doubt or depression or an accusation toward someone or someone's accusation toward you, you can all do that. Maybe we can close our eyes and spend maybe two minutes. Holy Spirit, we ask right now that you come and fill each one of us and you surface a lie or an accusation or an ungodly belief or an inner oath that's not true, that should not be there in the heart of our brothers and sisters. And right now, that they can begin to nail that lie or accusation on the cross. Lord Jesus, thank you for your cross. 
And that day, when another couple was nailing the accusation, the lie on the cross, as I closed my eyes and prayed for them, I saw the cross absorb that lies, that those lies, and those lies disappeared on the cross. And the next vision I saw is a close-up of the cross. The cross was covered with the blood of Jesus. Lord, there's power in your blood. There's power in your blood. Your blood can dissolve any kind of accusation, doubt, depression, fear, frustration, any ungodly belief. Hallelujah. How powerful your cross 2,000 years ago is still powerful now, even today, now, and forever. So Lord, as the brothers and sisters are nailing that lie or accusation on the cross, they can keep saying, I break all agreements I've made with, you can say that side in your heart, known or unknown, and I repent of joining with that word. I ask you, Father, to send that lie or accusation away from me. Father, what do you want to give me in place of? You can spend maybe 30 seconds or one minute before the Lord and asking God what truth or what blessing He wants to give you in place of that lie or accusation or ungodly belief. And I encourage you to write it down and proclaim. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, next, we want to see more missionary. Education and culture. Henry Luce, he is a missionary, also a vice president in Beijing University. And he preached the gospel to many. And later, when he went, his children are also uh, well accomplished. One of his child started Time Magazine and Life Magazine. And in memory of Henry Luce, there is a beautiful chapel in Doha University where Erica, you want to be a wonderful student there, I also wants to teach there. And uh, right now, if you go to Doha, it's uh, like a landmark of Taichung. It's a beautiful chapel. It's like a praying hand, like this, in memory of Henry Luce. And next one, um, Bates. Somebody called Bates the Schindler of China. Because during the 1919 slaughter, many people, when they went to Nanjing for, for um, refuge, because before the slaughter, the actual Japanese government has asked the, the foreigners to evacuate, because they say something terrible will happen. You better evacuate your people. And back then, he was on vacation with his family in Japan. But instead of staying in Japan to wait till the, the, the disaster uh, passed, he instead came back to Nanjing and joined uh, a dozen of missionaries to protect the people in Nanjing. They set up a safety zone so the Japanese cannot go inside the safety zone. In that safety zone, they protected at least 250,000 Chinese people. So um, Schindler by himself saved thousands of Jews. Based with dozens of farming missionaries and international friends in Nanking protected much many more. If Base also had a list, it would be way longer than Schindler's list. Through the movie, the Jews show their gratitude to Schindler. But how many Chinese still remember Base and those who did righteous things for us? So we want to ask God to bless the offspring of Base, his, his descendants, that he will prosper, that they will uh, receive the full blessing of God in Jesus' name. Amen. And the next is Eric Little. Yep. Who have uh, seen the, or heard the movie, The Guozhanqiu, Chariot of Fire? Thank you. Why is it be an Oscar winning movie? And it's about his story. True story. Eric Little was born in Tianjin as a missionary kid represented UK for the 1924 Paris Olympics. He was the best in 100 meter spring, but when he realized it was scheduled on Sunday, he decided to withdraw from it because it was not right for him to compete on Sundays. 
So he went to a 400 meters race, which he, he was not good at, the following Saturday. To everyone's surprise, not only he got a gold medal, but also he broke a world record at 47.6 seconds. Eric went to China as a missionary to preach the gospel the following year, 1925. He then was thrown into the concentration camp in China in 1943 with thousands of foreigners by the Japanese in China. He took care of kids in the camp by tutoring them and arranging activities and meetings for them. Many of the kids became missionaries when they grew up, maybe because Eric modeled love and forgiveness in the crowded concentration camp. And his epitaph on the tombstone was, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. May the Lord help us to do that. And the next is publications. Uh, James Lett, maybe uh, not many of you know him. I mean the same. But why I know his working and praying habit it really amazed me. You know, every day, every day, from 3 a.m. to 8 a.m., she was work, praying and working, praying and working. So before breakfast at 8 a.m., she already, he already prayed and worked for five years. For five hours, five hours. So, so it's not a surprise that he translated so many Chinese classics, including word by word from Chinese to English. It's a major, major word. So not only preach the gospel, he also uh, translated so many uh, wonderful Chinese classics. And the following is Chauncey Goodrich. This person is very related to our He He and his team, they translated the Union Bible all together for 29 years. From their translation to the publication, 29 years. So when the Union Bible, not this one, it's not that old, but when the Union Bible finally was published, he was the only one who's still alive to witness the publication of the Bible. So somebody made a statistic uh, saying that if you divided the, all the number of verses of the Bible by the, their working hours in that 29 years, then Averagely speaking, every verse, it took them four hours to translate each verse. So knowing the facts between, uh, behind the translation of the Bible, I think it made us treasure our Bible more. It, it's really a work of so many people even pay the price of their, their lives. Because what I know, I didn't say that much, but actually many missionaries, when they came to China, their children and their wives because not used to the climate and the, and the uh, food and everything in China, many of them died in China. So many of them, even together with themselves, their graveyard are together, father and mother and children. So they really pay their um, highest price to preach the gospel to us. And next one. Welfare and righteousness. Uh, John Nevius, uh, when he was growing up in the States, he was a, a farm boy. So when he went to China to preach the gospel, he also brought the technology of the farm to the uh, farmers in Shandong. He taught them how to grow apples and grapes. So um, he became the father of the Shandong Yantai apples. And you know, as, as Chinese growing up from our textbook, Shandong Yantai, the, their apples are the most famous in, in China. So we know Shandong Yen has the best apples, but we didn't know it's from missionary because it's not mentioned in the textbook at all. I didn't know until I read this book last month. So I was so happy to know the origin of the Shandong Yen apples. And when he died, before he died, he asked people to bury him under the fruit trees that he planted. And his motto is, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is pain. And he really has a living uh, testimony even today, we are still enjoying the, the delicious apples from Yantai and this beautiful story. Uh, we pray and more people will, will be able, able to know. And next one, David Hill. David Hill, when he came to China, he tried to preach the gospel uh, to the intellectuals. But the intellectuals said, oh, our Confucius. Oh, he, his birth year is even earlier than Jesus. We don't need to believe in your Jesus. And 
he also wants to try to preach gospel to the to the local people, but they are having opium, and they said, opium is also from UK. We are also from UK. What's the difference? So for him, it's very different. It's very very difficult to preach the gospel to the to the intellectuals or to the illiterate. So he prayed and he prayed. He asked God, the Lord, give me wisdom. How do I preach the gospel to the Chinese? And praise the Lord, the Lord gave me one more idea. The Chinese, they they like money. So he used the, the method of money to attract Chinese people. I think most people in the world, the whole world, like money, including Chinese. And he used the method of rewarding essays to attract the Chinese intellectuals to read Christian uh, literatures. And one, one time, uh, he, he knew that every three years, the intellectuals will go to the uh, capital area of that province to have their show taikao, should their big exam. So he uh, has this uh, 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 award, award saying that if you uh, re read those Christian literatures and if that's a good article, uh, we are going to give you many, many silver. So Mr. Xi Zizhi, she, he used different pen names for the money, for the contest. And out of the top four prizes, he got three. <laughs> he then became a true Christian, disciple by a hill, quit opium after addicted for many years, and changed his name to Xi Shen Mo. Shen Mo means overcome the devil. And he became a famous preacher and advocate for the gospel. And he started so many uh, places to eat, not, not only share the gospel, but also help people to quit opium. So he saved many people's lives. And praise the Lord. That's that's the way of disciple. He discipled him and she should have disciple so many Chinese people. And next, Lillian Dixon. Lillian Dixon actually has connection with our church. Uh, who knows Eve Harris? I think some of you know. Eve Harris, when she went to Australia for working holiday, she met her her now uh, husband, Luke. And Luke was an orphan in her orphanage. Um, before he was four months old. And when Luke was four months old, he was adopted by the Australian parents. Um, so Luke has no memory of, of this orphanage because when he left Taiwan, he was only four months old. So when Lillian Dixon uh, was, and her husband were deciding where to go, but they were back in the States. And her motto, her word came a, a very famous word. We only have one life. Let's go to the place where it needs us the most. So after prayer, they decided to come to Taiwan because right back then, it's right after World War II, and everything in Taiwan was very poor and needs a restoration. So not only orphanage, but also uh, house for the crippled, and also uh, service uh, clinics, and um, training for babysitters, and nursing, and carpentry, so many, many things. So she helped so many people, and uh, led many people to the Lord. And next is Gladys Elwood. She was from UK and she didn't have any education. And maybe she maybe barely fit, uh, finished her elementary school. So when she was applying to the China Inland Mission, she was rejected. Because you see, this is the Cambridge 7, that's the Yale 3. They have wonderful, wonderful university uh, degrees. But I think she barely finished her elementary school. So. Nobody can believe she can do a good job in a faraway country like China. But she has a strong passion and calling for the Lord. So after several uh, prayers and struggles, she still came to China. And uh, in the beginning, she was taking care uh, of an inn together with another lady. But after a short while, that lady needed to leave. So she was in charge of that inn. And the inn civil war broke out. So she led more than 100 orphans across maybe 1,000 miles to a, a safe place. And along, along the way, they were in so many difficulties. For example, one time, the Japanese were behind them, and before them were, was the Yellow River. And she was thinking, oh, Lord, are we going to die here? But one of the orphans said, Miss Elwood, you say we pray. Let's pray now. So, so she reminded Elwood to pray. And, and you know, sometimes we are, can also be weak, even if the, 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 the looks more mature. We also need a reminder or the encouragement of the younger one. So they pray together aloud. And after praying, uh, um, Wo Bingda, a KMT officer, appeared and asked him, 
what are you doing here? And they said, we are, we are escaping from the Japanese. And the, the officer said, I haven't had a ship. Would you want like to use? They said, go oh, for sure. So she and the, she and the 100 orphans, they squeezed into his uh, military ship and they crossed the river successfully. And uh, if you are interested, you can read the book, The Small Woman. It's all amazing stories like that. And it also turned into a movie. Next. The Inn of the Sixth Happiness. Ingrid Berman is the main leading actress. And you know, because Ingrid Berman oh, is so beautiful, so there must be a love story. So everything in that movie is true except the love story. <laughs> There's no love story. So actually, Alfred, she refused to watch the movie. She said, I never have a boyfriend. It's false. I don't want to go to the movie. <laughs> so everything else is true. If you see the movie, just remember only that part is not true. Everything else is true. <laughs> OK, next. Uh, is the, the last one I want to share today. Difficulties and martyrdom. Uh, in year 1900, um, there's a Boxer Rebellion. And in the Boxer Rebellion, uh, just the China Inland Mission, they lost 58 adults and 20 white children. And together with more than 2,000 Chinese believers, they lost their lives. Um, but, you know, they decided to imitate Christ and they gently declined any payment from the Chinese government. government. Um, Clover, Clover uh, together with his eight-month pregnant wife and wife, two children, three-year-old and four-year-old, they traveled more than 1,000 miles and all the way they suffered heat and persecution and uh, so many, many difficulties. So he wrote a book. A Thousand Miles of Miracle. If you are interested, you can also go for that book. Um, all the way, they were sharing the gospel to the soldiers, to the bystanders, to the, to the uh, men and women they encountered on the road. When they finally arrived at a safe place where there's no persecution, um, I think one week after that, her wife, his wife gave birth, the, 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 the baby died. I think because it's too difficult on the road. And one month later, his wife also died. Because you know, it's so difficult for an eight months pregnant woman to travel on foot. Um, of those 1,000 miles, they travel on foot. I cannot imagine if I'm eight months pregnant, I need to travel 1,000 miles on foot. It's, it's really too challenging. It's almost impossible. So although they made it the whole journey, but um, he lost his wife and his newborn baby. So go and pray, pray and go. I believe the way to go. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for leading so many missionaries from uh, the West to China. Without them, without us, if there's no missionaries from the West to preach the gospel to the Chinese people, we don't have any opportunity to believe in Jesus. So Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you so much. We thank you so much for all the missionaries from the West, that some of them buried under the fruit trees, some of them, them died on the, on the, at, at the night of the rebellion, a uh, box rebellion. And Lord, we, we really treasure all the things that you want us to know, that Lord, help us to know uh, right now in our home, in our workplace, in our school, whom you want us to reach out and what you want us to do. Lord, speak to our hearts. So everyone here, we can be also also be a missionary in our workplace, in our school, in our home, in our neighborhood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah.